What is a predicate? A predicate is part of a data pack. In the base game, they're used for loot tables, e.g. when mobs should drop certain kinds of loot, and what type of loot to generate in chests, etc. A predicate tells us whether something is true or false. The something that it tells us is called a condition. And there's a long list of conditions that are built into Minecraft. There's conditions for just about everything. From detecting your position in the world, checking scoreboard values, and even checking light levels. The full list of them is on the Minecraft wiki page for predicates. Predicates are often used as an alternative to having tons of scoreboards. However, there are some things that can only be done with predicates. So, when should you use a predicate? One, when you need to detect a large number of criterias at once. Two, when you are trying to reduce the number of scoreboards in use. And three, when you're trying to detect something that can only be detected by a predicate. Let's have a look at making one now. Given that it's a JSON file, predicates are very easy for computers to read, but fairly annoying to write as a human. Because of that, I'm gonna use a generator. This is a quite popular and up-to-date one. The link is miso.github.io slash predicate, and it's in the description for you to go click on. Let's start with a pretty common use case for predicates. Detecting if a player is sneaking. Our first condition here is called entity properties, and it contains just about everything you can think of to do with entities. It's got entity type, NBT, team, but what we want is under flags. Click on the plus to add a flags condition, then we'll click on is sneaking true. Now to get our predicate into the game, I'm gonna assume you're familiar with how to set up a basic data pack for this video, just like this one. But if you're not, go watch my data pack tutorial after this video. While I'm shamelessly cross-promoting myself, subscribe if you wanna see more quality command data pack videos like this one. Anyway, open up your data pack folder and go into data, then create a namespace for your project if you haven't already. Mine's called Tutorial. Brilliant. Inside that is where the new stuff happens. Create a folder called Predicates, spelled just like that. Inside here is where we will put the predicates. You can either copy and paste them into a new JSON file called something like issneaking.json, or you can download your predicate as a JSON file, then move and rename it once it's downloaded. Now we can go in-game and do slash reload. Our predicates are now loaded. There's a number of different ways to use predicates and commands, and no one is truly superior to any other. But let me show you some options. First, there's what you came here to see. Execute if predicate. I'll write the command slash execute as at a. If predicate tutorial is underscore sneaking, then run say I'm sneaking. What this does can be broken down into three parts. First, slash execute as at A. Run the following command once for each player. If predicate tutorial is sneaking, so if this player is sneaking, then run the command and say, I'm sneaking. Let's make this run every tick and see what we get. Nothing until I start holding sneak. Then the chat gets flooded with messages. Nice. The second way to do this would be to use the target selector form of predicate, meaning we can use a predicate to only select certain players. For example, slash execute as at a predicate equals tutorial is sneaking and run say, I'm sneaking. This command does exactly the same thing as our last command, but the predicate is built into the player selector instead of using an execute if command. Is this better or worse than the previous way? Not really, just different. I use this version less often just because I don't like how crowded it gets, and more importantly, because Minecraft doesn't let you tab complete your predicates this way. Get on it, Mojang. All the cool kids let you tab complete in your player selectors. Our second example is using a random chance condition to make something happen a certain percent of the time. Just choose random chance as our condition and write a percentage as a decimal between 0 and 1. I'll choose 0 0.5, giving this predicate a 50% chance of being true every time it's checked. I've added the predicate to my folder and reloaded. If you forgot how to do that already, then too bad, the information is gone forever. Wait, actually, I've just been informed this is not a live broadcast on television and you can go back and look again. Okay, good, good. Now, we could check our 50% chance on just ourselves. But that's boring. Instead, 
I've recruited my friend Logbog, Digdog, Bigbog, or Zigzog, Eggnog, Leapfrog, Hot Dog, Wigwog, Tall Man, Colonel Sand, Homestuck Fan, Haunted Lands, Big Band, Grand Can, Loves Mans, I'll Be Damned, to help with the commands. These are fake players created by the Carpet Mod, by the way. They behave just like real players for testing purposes, but aren't controlled by humans, because this is still single player. I'm not some kind of vanilla god. This is my command. Don't mind how long it is. Basically, all it does is execute as at A with the predicate 50% and also whose name is not my username. If that 50% chance condition is met, then it runs a particle command. Each time I run this command, each player basically does a coin flip. If they win the flip, then the particles go off. It won't choose exactly 50% of people every time, but each player has a 50% chance of running the command. Our third example is detecting players below a certain Y level. I've gotten several comments asking how to do this, usually for a Bed Wars inspired map. For this, we'll need a location condition, which can be found under entity properties. Click the plus next to location, then go down and click the plus next to position. Then, in the Y section, we want to change it from number to object, which will let us pick a range of numbers instead of just looking for one specific number. The first number here is the minimum height we're looking for, and the second is the maximum. I'll set these to 0 and 60, respectively. Adding it to my predicate folder, naming it something appropriate, like is y less than 60 dot json and reloading in the game, we can test it with a command. Here's my example command. Execute as at A, pretty basic, if the predicate tutorials is y less than 60. So if their y is less than 60, run a command that just says my y is less than or equal to 60. Awesome, then we switch this on. Ground level in this world is 64, you see that up there? So if we go more than four blocks down, this should activate. Keep an eye on my y coordinate in the top left. Two, three, Four, and there it is. There it is. Any lower than this, and it'll keep keep spamming. Test, and you can see it, it keeps on going. But as soon as we go back to the surface, it'll fade away. No more new messages are getting sent. Something else we can do with the location condition is detect light levels. Add a light condition and set it to object. Now we can enter the min and max light we want to detect. I'll detect 0 through 7 as that's what Minecraft considers dark for mob spawning. Bim bam boom, added to the game, reload, and here's our command. Execute as at A, if predicate tutorial is dark. Run say, I'm in the dark, just like the last one. Now, if we go into my spooky dungeon, we should know when we're in the dark. Ooh, scary. And also, very cool. There are many other cool things you can detect with predicates, such as time of day, biome, and even scoreboard values. But I'll leave figuring those out to you as homework. If you want to know what any of the other conditions do, the first place to look is this wiki page, link in the description. It's got a nice list of all the conditions and what they do, in pretty good detail most of the time. If you do have more questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Also, subscribe so you can get more videos like this one. I've been Legitimus, thank you for watching.